the best version of squatting for pelvic floor dysfunction is the one I'm showing in this video, so stay tuned. Hi, this is Dr. Shaki from Core Pelvic Floor Therapy right here in Irvine, Orange County. People with pelvic floor dysfunction understand the importance of their pelvis and pelvic floor. What I see happening a lot is all different um, versions of the same exercise being presented by different clinicians. From my perspective, and my perspective has to do with the stability of pelvis and your posture and the role it plays in pelvic floor dysfunction. And the reason I focus really hard on that is because every bit of work done on the pelvic floor without this stability of your pelvis and your skeletal system goes down the drain. It's kind of like you have a basket that you set certain things in this basket and going from point A to B while these things are nicely set before lifting them, you lift and you start shaking it. Well, by the time you get to point B, all those things that you neatly put and arrange in the basket is gonna be out of place. So stability of the pelvis is so important. And when it comes to the types of exercises, we want to really focus on providing a stronger skeletal movement, skeletal movements and functional movements. The squat that we all know how to, well, let's hope we all know how to squat. I've done videos on the standard squatting, but when it comes to sumo squatting, which is spreading your uh, legs apart and lowering yourself. So if you can't go so low, it's okay, stay there and make sure that, let me show you this side, make sure that you're not hunching or curving your back or arching your back. So it's nice, your spine is nice and neutral. So it's not arched and it, your tailbone is not tucked under you. So facing you this way now, we are lowering ourselves to that level. If I can't go lower, I can hinge forward. Hinging is bending right at the hips. So place your hands right where your pelvis gets connected to your lower extremity. That's when you keep your spine nice and neutral and you just go forward. That's this way versus that way. That's bending at the waist instead of keeping your waist no neutral and hinging. So back to facing you, you're lowering yourself. If you need to, you can hinge forward, but when it's time to go back up, you're not using your trunk to lift you up. Your trunk's role is to just stabilize itself and worry about its own weight and position. What I want you to focus on, which is weakened patients or individuals with pelvic floor dysfunction, is the stability and the distribution of weight on the floor. So put your brain at the bottom of your feet and make sure that you see the bottom of your feet in your head and you're pressing there and it's you're engaging your inner thigh not to bring the knees together because I'm at this angle. It's part of my inner thigh and part of the inside portion of my thighs that are engaging. So I should be feeling that whole area contracting and coming up. It's as if this part of me is trying to pull up as my legs are trying to push me up. Have that vision in mind as you're practicing this exercise. So this is a sumo squat without really having the, with the attention given to the inner thigh. When you do that, your brain connects to your inner thigh. Your brain connects to the whole length of your femur or your thigh bones. And in order to keep your knees stabilized, that inner portion and your glutes 
will work together to stabilize the tracking of your legs as you come up. And that is what I see often not happening from my perspective when it comes to pelvic floor dysfunction. If you have pelvic floor dysfunction and you're seeking care, but you're not seeing the result you want, or you think you have it, but you're not sure, make sure you use one of the methods of contact in the description box, and I will personally um, answer your questions. Until next time, take care.